The Origins of SpaceX Part 5 If you haven't seen the first four parts, I highly recommend that you go back and check those out, just to get an understanding of some of the topics I'm going to discuss. But to continue on, we are discussing the reusability project or going from the Grasshopper to the Falcon 9 and seeing whether or not they could actually vertically land their main booster. But before we jump back into that, let's first discuss some of the other projects that SpaceX was working on, one of which was the Dragonfly capsule. If you recall, the Dragonfly capsule was an updated Dragon capsule to see how well it could land propulsively on Earth, not just using parachutes, but possibly just solely using retro rockets. Now, the first flight of this would occur in May of 2015, and this was mostly just an abort test for what would later be put on top of the Falcon 9. And this went along with NASA's commercial crew development program, because once you put crew inside of Crew Dragon, then it would have to be able to abort the launch pad in the case that something was to go wrong with the main booster. Then, in November of 2015, Dragonfly would undergo another test, this one just being a hover test to see how well it could hover for 5 seconds. This using its eight Super Draco thrusters, or four pairs of its jetpacks as they call it. Now at this point in 2015, SpaceX got approval from the FAA to do a lot of testing on Dragonfly, or the ability to vertically land a Dragon capsule. Some of which included dropping it from a helicopter at 3,000 meters in altitude, and using a combination of parachutes and the retro rockets to safely land in a certain location. Then they would eventually just go into a liftoff, and then using parachutes and retro rockets, and then finally they would try and aim to do just a liftoff and then landing solely using retro propulsion. Now there would be proposed anywhere from 30 to 60 test flights of vertically landing the Dragon capsule. However, the project would eventually be discontinued, and this was mainly for two reasons. The first one being a safety issue if NASA wanted to put their crew in and then eventually land vertically. Not only would they have to develop the capabilities, but they would also have to go through a lot more testing after the fact to show that it's safe for crew. In addition, there was another project that they were focusing more towards at the time when they discontinued the Dragonfly project, so instead they decided to focus on that. But we'll get to that in a later point in the video. With that being said, they did not cancel the Crew Dragon or what would take people up to space, but rather they decided to no longer work on the ability to land the Dragon back on Earth using retro propulsion, so it would only be using parachutes. Now there was a really big project that they've been working on for a while but still hadn't launched, and this was the Falcon Heavy. If we remember in an earlier part, I said that they originally announced it in early 2012 and wanted to have the first launch to happen in 2013. But at this point in time, it's almost the end of 2015, and there's no end in sight for this project. Some of the issues that they ran into was that the center core booster would actually have a lot more structural load on it than they originally expected. Therefore, they almost had to design an entirely new center core. And at the same time, they were going through a lot of projects with the reusability, with the grasshopper missions, with the recent failure. All these things needed a lot of focus, and they didn't have so much time to focus just on the Falcon Heavy. And the success of the company wasn't critical to whether or not the Falcon Heavy or not flew within the next few years. So for the most part, they kind of put that on the side and expected it to happen in maybe late 2016, 2017, but it eventually happened in 2018, again, as I'll get to later in the video. Now that we've covered those projects, this then leads us back to the Falcon 9. On December 22nd of 2015, it would launch again, but it would be an updated version, the full thrust version. This was also the first launch since the previous pad failure that they had seen a few months back. Now this new version of the Falcon 9 would improve the overall performance of the vehicle by 33%. It implemented new updated Merlin 1D engines, a stronger inner stage between the first and second stage. It also improved the grid fins as well as the landing legs. It implemented a lot of the control functionality of the previous tested grasshopper missions. So mainly this was a big update, not just in performance, but also maybe in its capability to land. In addition, the recovery of the first stage was a little bit different for this launch, mainly because instead of trying to land it on the drone ship in the middle of the ocean, they instead brought the booster back to Cape Canaveral and tried to land it on a landing pad. They were able to do this mainly because they didn't need as much energy to get the payload into orbit, therefore they could save more fuel and bring the booster right back to land. Now let's go ahead and see what happened. So as we can see, the Falcon 9 lifted off, it cleared the tower, made its way to separation, and released the second stage. Then the booster performed its burn back where it tried to come back to land. And about five minutes later as the second stage brought the payload to orbit, the booster landed successfully on the landing pad in Cape Canaveral. 
This was the first orbital class booster to come back to the launch site and land. In addition, this booster is now on display at SpaceX's main headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Then about a month later, they would attempt more landings of their Falcon 9, but instead on a drone ship at sea. In January, a launch from Vandenberg would land on the drone ship, but one of the legs locked out and it tipped over. And then later in March, they would try again launching a geostationary satellite, but instead it was unaccessible due to low fuel reserves and crashed into the barge. This then leads us to April 8th of 2016, where SpaceX is launching a cargo mission to the International Space Station for NASA, but it turns out this would also be the very first successful landing on a drone ship, as you can see now. Throughout the remainder of 2016, SpaceX attempted six more launches, four of which successfully landed the booster whether it be on land or by sea. One of the failed attempts happened to do with a low thrust engine or an engine creating lower thrust than expected, which led to the booster landing on the barge but crashing. In addition, the last of those six launches that occurred throughout 2016, this would end up happening. This anomaly was later connected to either liquid or solid oxygen building up on the rocket and thus under friction causing it to ignite and destroying the vehicle. Now this was a setback for the company, but not as much as some of their previous failures. And this goes to show mainly because Elon Musk went out just a few weeks after this event and announced their new rocket they were going to be developing, the Interplanetary Transport System, or ITS for short. Now ITS would stand 122 meters tall, 12 meters in diameter, and consist of 42 Raptor engines. This would make the ITS launch vehicle three to four times stronger than the Saturn V, or the rocket that took the Apollo missions to the moon. For a quick second, let's jump back to the Raptor engine because SpaceX at the time released this video showing the Raptor engine successfully being tested. In now another project that had a few announcements going along with it was the Red Dragon. They claimed that they wanted to be able to send two Red Dragon capsules to Mars in 2020. This mainly just being a technological feasibility test, not necessarily for a development of a colony or really anything, just to see whether or not it would actually work. This then leads us into last year, 2017, where the company attempted 17 launches and each one of them was successful. The mission met its requirements. In addition, the company tried to land 14 of the boosters and they landed every single one of them. They also had a 15th landing that they attempted where they didn't actually want to reuse the booster but just see how well they could bring it down on the ocean. And they did so successfully, leaving the booster intact floating in the ocean to then later be recovered. Now during 2017, the Block 4 design of the Falcon 9 would be implemented, basically improving the engine performance of the Merlin 1D engines, as well as seeing how well it could be reused, successfully reusing a booster three times throughout that year. Now some of the major announcements that came out that year had to do with, well, the Red Dragon and the ITS. First off, the Red Dragon got cancelled, and this probably has to do with the alignment of why Dragonfly got cancelled. Mainly because Dragonfly was showing their capabilities to land a Dragon capsule, and if they weren't going to pursue that, it would make it really challenging to propulsively land a Dragon capsule on Mars. And they saw that as an opportunity to rather drop the Red Dragon and focus on something a little bit bigger. But speaking of ITS, that also got discontinued, or should I say replaced, mainly with the Big Falcon rocket, or BFR for short. Now if you want to learn more about the differences between the ITS and the BFR and what SpaceX has for the future, I recommend checking out that video. Now this then leads us into this year, 2018, where the company began with a test flight of their Falcon Heavy vehicle. Yes, it was finally done. So let's go ahead and see what happened. And the Falcon 
Now this getting a lot of attention, not only because of the ability to land the boosters side by side, but also because this would now be the most powerful launch vehicle on Earth that's currently in use. SpaceX claims they can take almost 64,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit. Now the Falcon Heavy has not flown since then, however there are two proposed launches coming up in either late 2018 or early 2019. But that's not the only notable launch of 2018. They also had the first launch of the Block 5 version of the Falcon 9, or the latest upgrade to the launch vehicle. Now at this point in time, the most reused SpaceX booster had only flown four times, but the Block 5 version was going to try and implement not only a stronger booster, improving the efficiency of the rocket, as well as improving the reusability, to hopefully be able to fly up to 10 or even more than 10 flights with the same booster therefore making it easier and more cost effective to do launches. Now another reason that the Block 5 rocket had to be implemented this year was for NASA's commercial crewed program. This mainly because since they're implementing the Crew Dragon over the next year or so, they have to make sure that the launch vehicle itself will be safe and meet the expectations that NASA has for the company. Now another reusability method that SpaceX has recently introduced is trying to get the fairing that costs anywhere from five to six million dollars. But how are they going to recover this? It turns out they're trying to use a boat with a giant net to catch the fairing out of the sky. So far, it has only been implemented in two launches, but it hasn't been successful. So let's hope to see that it could possibly work in the future. Now this then leads us to present day SpaceX. Now I don't want to predict too far into the future, but if everything goes well over the next few years and there aren't any major setbacks, it could be pretty exciting. Not only will we be seeing more launches because of the reusability of the Block 5, but we'll also see the first commercial crewed launches, and the first crewed launches since the space shuttle retired in 2011. But those aren't the only things to be excited about. We could probably predict over the next two to three years to start seeing the big Falcon spaceship and a grasshopper-like project be implemented for the BFS. Therefore, we'll start seeing this massive rocket vertically taking off and landing at higher and higher altitudes. So personally, I'm excited to see that as well. So what do you think is going to happen over the next few years with SpaceX? And do you think they'll be able to meet all the goals or will they experience some major setbacks? Let me know below. But thank you for watching and I really hope that you enjoyed this series.